power athlete potential is low. That's interesting. Crazy. Testosterone is now 19.8 nanomoles per liter. So that's over a 300% increase, which is... On the way to get a blood test, I did one a few months ago with Biovac to see where my levels were at. There were some things that we could definitely work on. And I talked to AJ, talked to the DNA guy Chris, and they formulated an awesome protocol for me to follow over the few months that I've been since I did the first blood test. And so now we're pretty much testing how far I've come, what do we need to change and improve from here. Yeah, so I'm excited to see the results, see uh, how far we've come. That's it. Whoop is loving me today. I'm in the green, 74% recovery, well rested, eight hours and 21 minutes of sleep. I made sure I got really good sleep for my blood test. I've been hitting like four hours restorative every single night, which is fucking insane. Compared to what I was hitting, I was like 45, 50 minutes restorative, waking up, feeling tired, change man, baby, let's go. Basically improve the markers a little bit. So just got the blood test. We weren't allowed to film inside the um, the thing. So yeah, really excited to see the results, baby, and discuss. Nice, get some more gains. Get some more gains, that's what it's all about. Optimize the team. <laughs> you know what? I need some fucking like trap. Okay, fuck yeah, let's get it. This is harder than a straight bar. No, 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 with wraps, you can get literally like between 20 and 50% more reps because the grip component's taken out. Seventy kilo deadlift. I've actually never gone above 160, so I'm gonna aim for three reps. I did six for 160 kg, but like I had two or three more in the tank, so aiming for three on 170. Just trying to build some really good base compound strength. Really good for everything from bone density, good for running, good for athletic performance, and just good for longevity. Ah. All right, there's only one thing to do next. Fuck it. Curls. They are extremely tough. I've been doing them for like four years and I can barely do one rep body weight only. Amazing exercise, even if you can't do like a full rep. Amazing exercise to bulletproof the hammies and specifically behind the knee. Classic posterior chain workout here at the Mecca, Virtus and Bondi Beach, best community in Australia, in Bondi. Fucking awesome place to work out. Body's feeling good. Prepping for a China marathon. Might do another a desert marathon in September. I got an email yesterday saying, here's free tickets for this marathon if you want to come join. So it's in like Jordan on the desert, bro, with like camels and shit. Awesome, Alfie. So, mate, we're going to go through your genetic SNPs and just to, I guess, help understand when, when we look at genetics and, and DNA, we look at potentials. So it's a, it's a numbers game, mate. So genes rarely are ever like 100% deterministic because there's so many interactions and, and multiple genes within the body. The body's this complex system. Understand that epigenetically, genes do and behave differently to what they're coding to as well. Yeah, 100%. To kick things off, we dive into like the nutrigenomic macro 
macros, micros, which ones are you best suited for? And which vitamins do you potentially need a higher amount of? High need for protein? That's fortunate, I eat a lot of protein. <laughs> I thought you might, mate. <laughs> you particularly have a number of genes associated with metabolic, uh, potential challenges genetically with this, and, and in particular, underlying genetic vulnerabilities uh, are good to identify, just so you know those, those more subtle sensitivities that you may have. Micronutrient requirements, when you look at this one, above average need for B6, really important that you get enough choline in your diet. K2 is actually a little bit more challenging to get from your diet. High need for manganese, high need for potassium, so getting enough prebiotic fibers, increased need for lutein and zeanthin, and this is just relating to eye protection, eye health. Yeah, awesome. High need for cruciferous veggies, hormone support, estrogen detox, high priority, low T3, which is the activated thyroid hormone, choline, and choline deficiency can, can also exacerbate anxiety, gene called comb T. Good gene to know about because it plays a role in dopamine production. You are known as a hybrid, so your pressure response um, is kind of pretty balanced. Potential sensitivities to environmental toxins, potential lower levels of glutathione, aromatic amines. This is like charring your meat. Stay away from aspartame. Do you um, eat organic spray free? Yeah. Organochlorines. So again, PCPs and, and pesticides in the environment, high, high sensitivity to your system, few heavy metal sensitivities. Look at increasing gut diversity. So glutathione protection is a major priority for you. It, it's your number one antioxidant. UV protection is a high priority. You just want to get enough folate, real folate in your diet. And you get that through leafy greens, cruciferous veggies, lots of berries. There's a few few organs that are kind of sitting borderline. Yeah, your cardiovascular panel, Alfie, is, is pretty good, mate. Genetically, to do with your, your, your fitness and your training, power athlete potential is low. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, endurance, exercise, inflammation is increased as well. So yeah, get, get those micronutrients, manganese, boron, vitamin C to support there. Uh, ACL and shoulder dislocation risk, uh, this is relating to uh, collagen production, uh, is less of a risk, so that's good. But a high risk for ankle and hamstring injury with the actin-3 gene. Yeah, I don't have Nordic, so that's good to see. Yeah, these are the vulnerabilities in, in your genes, and then the ways to upregulate and support those. So for example, making sure that you're getting enough vitamin A in the animal-based, not the plant-based, really important. And then at, at the bottom of the report, it suggests foods based on all those um, um, requirements but also I've suggested biomarkers to test for based on your report as well that is Fridays with the whole gang Alfie on the business calls Netflix is so tight. <laughs> yeah. Super interesting. So we got some blood work done, both Jake and I got blood work analysis done and we also got our DNA and they basically take the swab and it's crazy how much data and information you can get from this tiny little swab. Most interesting standout piece they had in that. They basically have a DNA correlation that they managed to find across with like Olympic level sprinters and it determines how primed your genes are for athletic performance and like to be an athlete. And mine was like super uncorrelated and super low, which I just thought was interesting. So I was so like genes aren't necessarily the whole picture um, but it was cool to see and definitely some good work ons off the back of it again really holistic in terms of solutions it wasn't like take these supplements to fix it it was more like let's see what we can do naturally first so things like sleep like different types of dietary foods and like always when it was recommended yes you could supplement for some of the vitamins that I was deficient in but it was always mentioned of like the food sources that I could get them from overall pretty impressed with it it was uh, a really good thing to go and do and there's a lot of like actionables and takeaways for me to put into work. Had an accident. So we are jumping on call now with AJ, the blood king. He's gonna see how far I've come in the last few months since I got my blood test with Biobase. We implemented some protocols. Me and AJ had a chat um, earlier and we've been messaging back and forth, sending voice notes, adjusting the protocol for the last few months. And we're basically gonna see how far I've come, if my testosterone's improved, and we're also gonna see what we need to do from here as well. So let's jump on. <laughs> 
now like what we can see from blood test one and blood test two is there's still this sign of a bacterial issue but actually if we look into your blood work we still know it's tremendously improved so it's now mm. it's kind of like okay you want to get to that ne next level then we do need to address the bacterial issue 100 percent. that's some game let's do it let's kind of hit it from the top to bottom obviously we did get a new marker this time which was your homocysteine which is quite cool because obviously this can tell us about the potential of a vitamin b deficiency the cool thing is, is we know it's well within the conventional ranges and as you know i massively respect the conventional ranges if it's outside the conventional ranges and obviously it's a massive warning sign whereas if it's within the conventional ranges but outside functional ranges that's when we're looking into early warning signs whether it be a deficiency a dysfunction or an imbalance going on in the body and have you noticed a massive difference since obviously reducing your training yeah 100 percent. like dialing in sleep not like feeling obligated to get up super early and like you know do some sort of high intensity workout every morning like sometimes i'll i'm just like more intuitive with it listen to the body like when i feel good i'll push yes. a bit harder when i don't like i'm, I'm happy to just kind of chill out awesome man yeah that's something we definitely spoke about and that's something we really big on that i feel not a lot of people do especially males like how much are we really connected to our body how much do we actually listen to it when we come on to rdw so comparing that to last time we can see that's reduced which is really good so now we're going to be looking into antioxidant status as well without even having to get an antioxidant profile so this is where it starts to get interesting and then obviously if we look into low white blood cells that could be any sort of infection so i can't say for definite bacteria yet but what i can see here from a nutrient deficiency perspective again we're talking about b6 b9 b12 which we've already touched on and we just know at the moment it's just showing compromised immunity but i want to know why that is because as i say we've seen a lot of improvements which is cool like even your neutrophils and your lymph sites now both of them are optimal by the way so that's really cool so low total protein as well can be down to a zinc deficiency for example we also know low white blood cells can be down to a zinc deficiency as well so now we've got two markers which could show a potential of a zinc deficiency in the first test jake's testosterone was 5.5 nanomoles per liter so as you can imagine this is significantly low because it's even outside of the conventional ranges whereas in his most recent test the testosterone is now 19.8 nanomoles per liter so that's over a 300 percent increase which is bloody incredible because it's only been what about 90 days you've been on the protocol yeah crazy i couldn't believe that it's insane yeah i mean shout out to to biobate and ted from biobate um for hooking it up because like yeah I've, i mean i've learned so much and going all through that with you now was crazy like a lot of improvements definitely still some work to do but like really cool to see some of the markers just improve from like 90 days especially testosterone that was wild tremendous mm. but most importantly what i want everyone to know is we haven't done that with that with any sort of testosterone boosters we've literally just been removing health handbrakes that's the most simple way to put it remove your health handbrakes mm. and your hormones will be in a much better position exactly and jake is testament to that so good dude no it's been amazing so yeah i'm keen to just keep cracking on i mean it's like it's day in day out eh? there's uh yeah still a lot of work to do but man i'm stoked with the, yeah. the progress it's sick yeah definitely so for anyone who is interested in getting their blood work analyzed you can find me on instagram and it's my tag is aj underscore superhuman health and if you just drop me a dm then we can have a conversation we can obviously see if it's going to be a good fit for you and also i can just guide you towards the best next steps definitely check out aj he is the blood king that's what i call him. hell yeah man it's been quality to see you again and i'm buzzing for you thanks so much dude i appreciate it again i'll talk to you very soon wicked man bang Boom, bah. Fuck, he's a beast, eh? Testosterone, 300% plus increase since uh, 90 days ago. So that's like pretty insane. Considering 90 days ago, I was like in the dumps. I credit that to lack of sleep, stress from work and overtraining and just like being super low body fat. So you can probably tell I'm a little bit more chunky these days, which is which is fine. Like it was intentional. Just really wanted to sort out, you know, better quality sleep, improve my testosterone and improve markers in general. Being lean for a sustained amount of time definitely has a, a big effect on just quarter all through the body low testosterone um energy levels brain fog like may look good on camera but definitely takes a toll mentally as well so yeah we've uh we've definitely made some huge improvements and still a lot of improvements to go but um might check in in another 90 days all right i'm so smelly can you smell me <laughs> it's fucking disgusting <laughs> i literally went to the gym didn't shower just dialed in with work and then got straight on the bike and now i'm stinky